Hello friends on the internet today. Today I want to show you how easy it is to build a web scraper using under 20 lines of code. But not only that, show you how to adapt the web scraper in order to scrape whatever you need from a web page. I will be building this project using JavaScript, Node.js, Express, as well as two packages called Axios and Cheerio. I will be doing this with a beginner's mindset in mind. So if you don't know anything about Node or Express, please do not be worried. I will be taking you through everything step by step and explaining everything we are doing along the way. My aim for this video is to make it as accessible to as many of you as possible. A basic understanding of JavaScript is advised, but not a hard prerequisite as I am giving you my full permission to take the 20 lines of code. So just copy and paste them and use them as you wish. After of course, understanding what the code does by watching this tutorial. But before we get started, what exactly is web scraping and what is it used for? Web scraping refers to the extraction of data from a website quickly and accurately. Imagine, for example, you are working at a company that has asked you to make a list of all the companies working at a particular trade show. And not only that, but their contact name and email addresses. Well, most people would probably open up the website of the trade show and start writing down the first company starting at A, then the name, and then the email associated with that company, and then move on to the next one, and so on and so on. And it could literally take you days to get all the details that you need and most likely some spelling mistakes would be made. With web scraping, you could have all that information in seconds. Many people move on to selling their web scraping tools for money, either by building them as a Chrome extension or API or selling them to data capturing companies. So the option to make money off this tool is there for you too. Okay, so now that we understand what a web scraper is and what it can be used for, it's time to get building one. So here we are. I'm just going to create a blank project using WebStorm. Please feel free to use whatever code editor or IDE you wish and just create an empty directory. So I'm just going to go ahead and click here and just call this web scraper, just like so, so that we can start completely from scratch. So as you can see, here's my directory. There are currently no files in it. Before we get going, I just want to make sure that everyone watching has Node.js installed on their machines. Node.js is essentially a open source server environment and we will be using it to create our own server or in other words, our own backend. It's free and allows us to use the JavaScript language in order to create it. So I am a big fan. So I'm just going to head over to Node.js. Now I am using a Mac, so I would of course click here in order to download this onto my computer. However, here are all the other options you have for installing the source code. So please go ahead and choose the one that you need. Now I already have this downloaded, so I'm not going to go ahead and click here, but please go ahead and click whichever version or option is required for you. Okay, great. Now let's carry on. So back in our project, it's time to get coding. The first thing I'm going to do is just open up my terminal right here and I'm going to type a command. The command is npm init. Okay. This will trigger initialization and spin up a package JSON file. We are creating a package JSON file so that we can install packages or modules into our project to use. If you want to have a look at all the packages that are available to us, please go ahead and visit npmjs.com. So here are all the packages available to our disposal. If you go ahead and just type one Axios and click it, you get all the information on how to install it as well as how many weekly downloads it gets. So there we go. You can literally search through all the packages that are available to you right here on this registry. As a general rule, any project that uses Node.js, as we will be using, will need to have a package JSON file. So let's go ahead and create one. So I'm just going to go ahead and type enter and these prompts will be shown. Now I'm just going to go through and go enter version one. Enter is fine. Description, I'm going to leave blank. Entry point is in dates JS. That is fine. And then I'm just going to leave all these blank like so and click OK. So there we have it. Now, if we go into here, you will see that a package JSON file has been generated for us based on the commands that we just had. 
So once again, here was our web scraper. The version is one because this is the first version of the app that we are building. The description we left blank and the main file that we are going to be reading is index.js. So let's go ahead and create that index.js file. I'm just going to go ahead and create it like so. And there we go. The package JSON file does actually a lot more than just hold our packages and the versions of them that we need. So if you'd like to know more about it, please pause here and Google beginner's guide to using NPM. But for now, let's carry on. So wonderful. Now that we have that, let's get to installing some packages. The first packages that we are going to need is a package called Express. Express is essentially a backend framework for Node.js. Okay, we're going to install it in order to listen to pass and listen out to our port to make sure that everything is working okay. What I mean by this is that if we visit a certain path or URL, it will execute some code and it will listen out to the port that we define. But enough talking, let me show you how. So as I said, the package that we need is called Express. So I'm just going to show you it on here. Let's search for the package Express and it will give us the instructions on how to install it. So I'm just going to copy that and go back to my project and whack the command in here. So npm i, i is essentially for install. It's a shorthand and I'm going to click enter and wait for that to install as a dependency to my project. So that is now done and you should suddenly see a dependency show up here. And there we go. So express is our first dependency and it has shown up here with a version. Now, what is quite important for you to know is that if this project is not working you for any reason, it could be, it doesn't have to be, but it could be because of the version. So if that is the case, make sure to delete whatever's in here and write the version that I am using and just install the package again by running npm i for short. Okay, so that will reinstall the package and will generate a package lock JSON file. So as you can see here, this file has been generated since we installed the dependency. And if we look here, we will find the express package. So I'm just going to find that in here by typing express. And there we go. So you will see the version as well as which registry it has been installed from. Wonderful. Another reason that this project could not be working is that the node version that you install could be incompatible. To check your node version, all you have to do, so I'm just going to press Command K to clear this down here. All you would have to do is type node V to check the version and make sure that it's the same as mine. Now, if you want to change the package, you can do so. It will require some extra configuration and you can use the NVM command to essentially install different packages. So I'm going to show you how to do this. This might not work for you if you haven't configured your computer correctly, but essentially you can install a certain package onto your computer. So I can install version 0.1031, for example, and click enter. So now I'm essentially installing this version as well as having this version. Okay. And once that has done loaded, I'm going to show you how to use that version. So let's just wait for that to finish. And I can use that version by typing NVM use and then this package right here, even though as default, it has now switched to this version. So instead, I'm going to use this version NVM use to switch back to using the node version that we installed. And there we go. We are now using node version 14.7.6. Wonderful. So there's are two reasons that your project might not work if you are watching this in the future. Perhaps there's been newer versions of Express or newer versions of Node that have come out that has made something break. So that is just something you need to know. That is a bit of knowledge because that is not only applicable to this project, but in general is applicable to many projects that you will come across as a developer. Okay, so we now have the package Express. As a reminder, the Express package is a backend framework for Node.js. Okay. Now, another package that we need to use, I'm just going to clear this again, is a package called Cheerio. So once again, I'm just going to go here and search for the package Cheerio. And there we go. Cheerio is a package that we will be using to essentially pick out HTML elements on a web page. 
It works by passing markup and provides an API for traversing and manipulating the resulting data structure. Cheerio's selector implementation is nearly identical to jQuery, so if you know jQuery, this might be familiar to you. So now that we know what we will be using this for, let's get to using it to pick out elements from a web page, okay? And we're going to be doing that from this web page right here. So let's go ahead and install it. I'm simply going to copy this and in WebStorm, just install the package Cheerio, just like we did with Express. And once again, it should appear in our dependencies right here. So here we go, there is Cheerio and the version of Cheerio that we installed. Wonderful. We have one more package to install and that is Axios. So once again, let's go in here and find Axios. Axios is a promise-based HTTP client for the browser and Node.js. Axios essentially makes it easy to send HTTP requests to REST endpoints and perform CRUD operations. This means that we can use it to get, post, put, and delete data. It is a very popular package and one that I use quite a lot as a developer on a day-to-day -day basis. So once again, let's install it. I'm going to show you how to use it in a bit. So once again, I'm just going to put that in here and wait for that to install as a dependency. Okay, wonderful. So there we have it. There we have all three of the packages that we're going to need for this project. Now that we have that, I'm just going to do one more thing and that is write a script. So to write a, so just going to get rid of that one because we're not going to need it. I'm going to write a start script so that if I use the command npm run and then start, as that is what you have called the script, I'm going to essentially run index.js, listen out to changes on the index.js file. So that is what Nodemon does. It listens out for any changes made to our index.js file. So that is now done for the setup for our package JSON file. Please feel free to take this from the code that I have shared with you in the source code. Hopefully you understand what all of this means for now and exactly what we need to get going. So now let's head over to our index.js file. The first thing that I'm going to do is actually use all the packages that we have just installed. So if we go to the documentation, you will see that the first thing we need to do in order to use these packages is to require them in the index.js file. So I'm just going to copy that line and in here, I'm just going to paste the line like so. And I'm actually going to do it for all the packages. So we've got Axios. We also have Cheerio and the packages again called Cheerio. And then we also have the package express. So there we go. There's all three of our packages that we need. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is actually initialize express. So to do this, I'm actually going to get express. So what I'm doing here is essentially getting the package and getting all of its wonderfulness, everything that comes with and storing is express but we need to actually call Express in order to release all this wonderfulness. So I can do so by grabbing Express and calling it. And now that we have called it, let's save it as something else. I'm gonna call it as const app. You can call it whatever you wish. So Express essentially comes with great stuff like use, get, or listen. And because we've saved it all under app, I'm gonna use app listen to listen out to a port. So listen out to the port that we decide. Let's decide that our port is going to be const port 8000. So we are saying that we want to listen out to port 8000 to see if any changes are made. And essentially, we want our server to run on port 8000. Again, this can be whatever port you wish. That is totally up to you. So I'm going to listen out to port 8000. Uh, what the syntax for this looks like is like this. So port listen, and then I'm going to pass through a callback and I'm just going to say, so if this is working, I want it to say server running because this is my server on port and then pass through whatever port we defined up here. So this is looking good, server running on port. Let's get to starting our app to see if this has worked. 
So all I'm going to do is use this script. And the script is npm run, and then I've chosen to call it start. So there we go. And wonderful, our server is indeed running on port 8000. And that will essentially listen out for any changes we make to this file. So if I make a change to this file, let's just go ahead and call this Bob and call this Bob, for example, and click save. It will restart due to changes and start again on by running node index.js. OK, and then we get the message server running on port 8000. So let's change that back to app just to make things more readable and carry on. So great, that is step one. Now step two, let's get to actually doing some scraping. So to do this, I am gonna start using some packages. And the first packages I'm going to use is Axios, okay? And Axios works by passing through a URL and it visits that URL and then I get the response from it. And in this case, I'm gonna get the response data and save it as some HTML that we can work with. So in this case, let's pass through the URL that we want to work with. So we know that this is the Guardian. So I'm just going to copy that and I'm just going to paste it in here like so. We can, of course, make this much more readable. So I'm just going to save this as a URL as I don't plan on it changing and save the string and then just pass through the URL just like so. OK, so now that we've passed through that URL, I'm going to do some chaining. If you don't know much about chaining, I do have an asynchronous JavaScript mini series that I really do recommend you watching. Uh, for now, just please carry along coding with me anyway. So this will return a promise. And once that promise has resolved, then we get the response of whatever's come back. So response. And then, well, we were going to get the response data and let's save this as html okay so you can call this whatever you wish now if i console log html and i am just going to click save you will see all this html come back to me this is essentially the html that is from the guardian home page okay you will see it here guardian or guardian related stuff so this is great, but how do we start picking out certain elements? Okay, like what if I want to pick out this button, for example? Well, we do so with Cheerio. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to delete this for now. And I'm going to use Cheerio, so the package we just installed. And it comes with something called load that will allow us to pass through the HTML, so all of this. And then we're going to save it as, let's just do a dollar sign. Okay. So there we go. So now whenever we use the dollar sign, we're essentially using all of this HTML. And now I can essentially find, so I'm going to use the dollar sign, and I can essentially look through all of the HTML elements and look for something with the, let's go ahead and see what we want to pick out. So I'm just going to inspect this page. If we want to pick out, for example, all the titles in here so I can do so I can pick out each of the articles title and perhaps the URL that comes with them I could look for let's go ahead and inspect something let's inspect this one we could look for something that has the uh, CFC maybe not this one maybe let's make it bigger to have a better view of what we can and can't use So for example, if we inspect this H3 tag right here, we can see that it has the class of FC item title. So let's go ahead and use that because in it, we also see that this has an A tag with an href, which is a URL. So I'm just gonna copy this as the class name that we wanna look out for. So here we go. And I'm just going to paste it like so, making sure to put a dot in front of it as we are looking for a class name. So that is what we are looking for in the HTML. So don't forget to put that. That is the syntax that you need. And for each item that you find like this, well, what do I want to happen? Let's write a function. So this is a callback function. And for each item that we find that has the class FC item title, 
I want to get that item, so this is the syntax for doing so, this, I want to grab its text. So we know this is an H3 tag, so it will have some text. If you want to have a look here, there is some text in here. So if we look in here, there we go, there is some text. So that is what we are grabbing essentially. And I also want to grab the href. So I could do so once again by grabbing so this and getting the attribute of href that exists inside it. If I want to be more precise, and I think that might be a good thing to do, I can also find the a tag that exists in that item and then get the attribute of href from it. Okay, so there we go. That is the syntax for doing so. Let's go ahead and save this as title and let's save this as the URL that we are looking for. And there we go. So for each element that we are finding, we're getting a title, we're getting something that is the URL. And now I'm actually going to create an array. So where shall we create this array? Let's go ahead and just create it up here. So I'm just going to do it here. Const articles and an empty array. Now for each item that we create, I, I want to get a title, I want to get this URL, and I'm going to get the articles array, which is currently empty, and use a JavaScript method called push to push something into it. And I'm going to create an object, and this object is going to have the title that we just picked out and the URL. Okay? So that's all we really need to do. The next thing I'm going to do, just to show you this is working, is just console log, and then uh, console log out the articles just like so and just for good measure we're going to catch any errors so this is how you catch errors i'm just going to catch uh the errors so catch error console log error okay great so now let's check it out i'm just going to save that and let's see what comes back there we go so we are indeed getting the array that is coming back. We have literally scraped the web page and we are getting back. So here is the results of our scrape. We are getting back the title and the URL of all the articles that exist on the Guardian homepage. Okay, and there is a lot. So there we go. We have now successfully scraped a web page. And that's really all there is to it. So hopefully that was easy enough. Again, if you want to just take this code, so let's maybe make it a bit smaller. This is all it is. These are all the lines that you need along with the setup. You can, of course, adjust this to scrape whatever you wish. So as long as you know what you're looking for on the web page, you can pick out the certain elements. You can search for A tags. You can search for H3 tags. You can search for things like class name. It is completely up to you. So hopefully this has helped you in creating your own web scraping app. Please do hit me up if you have any questions or if you just want to chat, do so in the description below. Thanks very much.